Today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, of course, we're going to be doing a little bit of fact or fiction, a tip of the week, open phones and texts, and this I get every week, Matt. It's almost every other phone call conversation at a transmission shop because sometimes you're considering an expensive repair. People say, well, why would I fix, why would I put $3,000 into a $5,000 vehicle? Or why would I put $3,000 into a $2,000 vehicle? And my instant answer is... That equation would totally make sense if you were in the car buying business, buying and selling cars. You wouldn't spend three grand to sell it for two, but you're not. You're in the cost per mile business, at least most people are. What's going to be my best bang for the buck as far as having a good set of wheels? And so that's the way I look at it, you know, and it depends that if you don't need. Well, you know, you get it all the time with the transmission shop question, and I get it all the time with the blown head gasket question oh, yeah, or, yeah. or the ran out of oil question. And, and I think before we even go to the should I fix this car or why does it make sense, and, 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 and there's a good, I don't want to say argument, but you have to debate that with yourself. Mm. You've got to lay it out. But the one common denominator, and it may not be so much for you, Dave, with the transmission things, they're usually avoidable problems. Oh, yeah, a lot of times they are. And we talk about the good way to ruin your car, driving it the extra mile on the off-ramp or overheating it, or always saying no to the stuff they tell you at the auto repair shop. Usually, our regular customers who allow us to maintain their car, they don't have they, that big they question. They never have to have this debate with themselves or their spouse or their parent or their child or themselves standing in the mirror. So that's the the first thing is is let's make sure we're taking care of our car. But then you're right. So what's the you know I don't you know we could have we could talk about all kinds of exp- expensive cars, whether it's a twenty thousand dollar car mm-hmm. that needs a ten thousand dollar engine. Or whether it's a, a Tahoe that yesterday, a week ago, it didn't make any noise and ran fine and it was worth, I don't know, 11000 Right. But the motor blew up today. Or suddenly it's got this rod knock or, or something, mm-hmm. and it needs an $11,000 motor. engine. Is it worth it? Well, that, that you have to – the answer oftentimes is yes. Sometimes it's no. But you have to have someone, like you said, Dave, to have that conversation with. And the 23-year-old kid across the counter no. with no life experience. No, work, working he's, at he's the, not the guy to ask that question working to. At, working at, you know, just, just schlepping oil changes or at the discount, uh, you know, coupon repair shop or whatever you have uh, is not that guy. So how do we how do we look at that? I mean, there there's... Well, yep. so here's the yeah, so here's the way cuz I always, you know, my my common denominator is what, what's going to be your best bang for your buck? Cuz I watch people take a $3,000 problem and fix it with a $30,000 vehicle, which the sales tax on is $3,000. So, it's kind of an emotional thing like am I am I wasting money on this old car? And sometimes people are looking at an old car that's not an old car. You know, I mean, you know, some they say, well, definition of old car is, is like six years old. And we, some people we had a caller last week. She goes, oh, it's got a bunch of miles on it. It was like one hundred and twenty thousand. Like that's barely broken in. Yeah. You we're know, not talking about a 78 Buick. Yeah, no. <laughs> so uh, so the perspective of what's a good car, what's a tired out car? You know, when do I when do I punt this car and put it out to pasture? But to your in, in your explanation. OK, so there's eleven thousand dollar Tahoe. The motor goes bad for whatever reason, and it needs, let's say, a ten thousand dollar motor. And a ten thousand dollar motor maybe sounds expensive, but if you're doing it right and you're replacing the radiator and replacing all the mounts and replacing all the hoses, and while you're there, you might as well do it all because you get to drive this car for another hundred fifty thousand. Why do a miles? crappy job for seven? Yeah, you do a cherry job for ten. You know, and those yeah, are, again it, just making up rough numbers. But, but but when your motor goes bad, you just took an eleven thousand dollar vehicle, and now it's only worth two thousand dollars. Yeah, twenty so, five hundred. Sale. So if you don't if you don't fix it, you just lost nine grand in the value of the vehicle. Either way, you're 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 spending the money. Either way, whether it's in the value of the car or the value of the repair, you it's going to happen either way. Sure. You're yeah. taking a hit. So why would you do it? So you can put in the you know put in the eleven thousand dollars. Basically, you just bought an eleven thousand dollar Tahoe, which has got a strong engine. Well, in well it. I always say the best used car to buy is the one you already own. So, but let's look at that. So the question, so here you are sitting with this. So here's how we approach it at Virginia Auto Service. We're going to look at the car and say, okay, 
if it needs this repair, and, and it's a very holistic approach, the engine is not just the, you know, we're just not unbolting an engine, bolting another one in there, you know, Larry can do it on the weekend. Slap it in there, yeah, shoehorn. I mean, you're doing all the things that make that job a complete throttle job, because the most important thing when you spend that kind of money, we don't want to be back nickel and diming you to death, right. or cutting a corner to save 250 bucks, and that $250 causes this new engine to have a failure. So, so we're going to make a total estimate. But the other thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the entire the condition of the entire vehicle because you don't want to go spend eleven thousand dollars then if you've got a bad transmission and a differential howling at you and right. all these other yeah, problems. And, yeah, yeah. An eleven thousand dollar motor has five extra thousand dollars in things you got to take care so of. So what's our canvas look like? You know, maybe people just it's got some decent. Yeah, they put some new Michelins on it uh, last year. The brakes were done, you know, a year and a half ago. So let's look at the foundation. And, and before we put that engine in, then we're going to do our best to kind of predict what is this going to need over the next several months. And we can put that all together and predict some things and price it out. And 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 then you really start to look at this picture. Now, if you just hate your car, the thing's a total piece of junk and it's been it's just been, you know, abused and, right. and haven't taken care of sometimes. And we'll tell you, hey, man, because if we do this job. Whether you like it or not, we're married now. We, oh, yeah. We yeah, own we, this. Yeah, this car even farts over the next two years. You're calling <laughs> us up. So we know we, you know, we know what we got to do. Now, there is a point in case where let's just say, you, you know, you, your motor goes and you say, you know, I really don't want this vehicle. I just need to get it running so I can do something with it. Well, sometimes we do put in used parts. Sometimes we don't go all the way to, you know, do, you, you know, doing as much stuff. But that's the conversation that has to happen. But you're talking earlier about you just every, every time you go to the auto shop, you just say no. And I get why people do it because you know there's some auto shops out there that are overzealous. They'll sell you everything, mm-hmm. whether you need it or not. And so people are kind of on the defense. I don't need that. I don't need that. Well, you say no, 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 and then you build up for the big repair. But then again, if you're always saying no to your people, why are you even there? Right. Because there's a the level of distrust. You're the wrong you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're always checking your spouse's phone to find out where they were, you got the wrong all spouse. This, you got the wrong spouse. Or you, you, or you, you know got a problem. Mean? Or you, yeah, or you got, you got some issues you need to go <laughs> sit on the couch. You go somewhere. lay on a couch, yep. But, but the point is, if, if you're going to this auto repair shop and every time they tell you something, they say no, why are you here? Right. Yeah. Go away. There, you, you, you don't a, trust there, the people there, that are advising yeah, you. Yeah. So we got, we've got to. That's a whole nother, another topic <laughs> in another show. But so, I guess what we're saying here, Dave, is you don't have to have a knee jerk reaction mm-hmm. to to um, no, it's too much money. You really got to just pump the brakes. Yeah. The other problem when you have to buy a car. That's when you go then make bad decisions mm. that you pay for for a long time. You don't want to shop for groceries on an empty stomach. And you don't want to go car shopping when you don't have a vehicle because you're going to buy the first wrong thing you see. Yeah. You know, it, it just, that's, and yeah. that's the thing is sometimes it's better even to fix a car, even if you're not going to keep it long term. Yeah, fix the car, give yourself six months or a year, and have a plan for the next vehicle. But now you actually have something to trade in if you're going to trade something in versus going down to the dealership and trying to negotiate. Well, I got this trade, but it doesn't really run because it's down there at Tri-City Transmission. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It, it's just a weird conversation. So sometimes it's worth fixing it and saying, okay, I really don't love this car. And the question I ask is, before this car broke, Were you already thinking about getting another car? Because that weighs into the decision. Yeah, you know, I already was. I hate this car. I don't want this car another minute. Okay, then let's not fix it. Cool. Yeah. Punt. Yeah. Drop back and kick. Yeah, get rid of it. Make yourself, especially if you want all the new gadgets and GPSs and safety features. Mm -hmm. You know, the average car on the road right now is is in that 12 year old range. That's average. And in Arizona, it's a little higher. We've got good weather. We don't really lose. Not a lot of rust. We don't lose the cars to rust and salt. I almost feel like you're talking about Michael Henry's car because he's got that. Avalanche, he smoked the motor on. Yeah, and you know it's right in that 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 value range, and that's about what he spent. So you yeah, know. it it yeah, it, and and it doesn't you know, and and maybe it's not the catastrophic failure, but maybe you're the person, and and I know if you're honest with yourself, you there's a, a whole lot of people that have out there that have said there's the exact same thing. You mean to tell me? All this stuff is wrong with my car. I've had this thing since it was new, and I've never had to do anything. And all of a sudden, it needs twenty five hundred dollars worth of repairs. <laughs> I mean, come on, people, give you know, really think, think about, about what you just said. I about, haven't had to do anything, or I haven't done anything. And what do you mean it's it's bad? Yeah, I mean, God, I can't imagine. I've never had to do any. I mean, it's just you know, you kind of have some sarcasm in in that in in hearing that, and you also have it's like watching someone. You know, I joke around with the guys at work all the time because our office is our lunchroom. 
you know, and at least once a week they put something in the microwave. It comes out sizzling hot, and they buy it. They're like, "Damn, that was hot!" I'm like, it "Just came out of the microwave." What do you expect? <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> you just drove your car 150,000 miles and done nothing but change the oil. What do you expect? Yeah. So, so it That's... doesn't have to be a catastrophic failure. And and sometimes if people get in the same situation, they automatically say no. I'll just go get a new car. Well, really think about that. Yeah, you gotta I you mean, gotta let that marinate on your mind. You gotta consider your options. You gotta consider, you know, is there is there changes coming down the road? Are you thinking about having kids? You don't need to necessarily fix a two door sports car convertible if you got your wife's pregnant with twins. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, okay. Maybe we don't fix it. 